Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Again, um, apologies that this video is so late. Um, I know most people will probably either watch it today or tomorrow. Um, work's been a little crazy, but for the rest of the week, it's going to come out, you know, normal schedule time. Let me just get my note for a second. Now, um, this is going to be kind of the usual note, it's a little off the cuff, but, um, so let's get into this. Okay, so in the beginning of the episode, you know, you have Anna and you have Robert talking, and Anna's pretty much just like, just let it go. Um, Liesl is already convicted, and let's just drop it and just leave it, you know, just, let's just leave it alone. And I'm like, wow, really? She just... There's just evidence there, so we should just let it go, and that's just, just trust the, like, it, she's just so fucking blinded for her son's love that she's just like, yep, mm -hmm, they got a little bit of evidence, alright, that's, that's good enough, alright. And just expect everyone to just, you know, it's, she gets to, the thing that really annoys me is that she gets to a point where she just wants everyone to just like her son, you know? She's like that one mother that just has to actually have every person likes her son, likes their child regardless she's that person and i gotta be honest with you it's annoying um so and i'm a little off the okay so you know she she's telling robert to just drop it or whatever robert's like all right fine or whatever even though robert doesn't you know he's not really gonna do it but he wants um, Peter to drop his guard, so the best way to do that is to convince, um, Anna, you know, alright, I'm just gonna let it go, whatever, and, you know, whatever. So, let's flip over to Maxie and Peter. Um, and this part was really interesting, and the reason why I say that is because, you know, Maxie's like, you know, I'm nervous about telling Lulu that I'm working with Valentine, and, um, you know, she, she talks to Peter, and the thing that really kind of got me was that she was like, listen, you know, she acts as though, you know, Charlotte doesn't need her father. And she does, you know, she gets so mad and so hung up on stuff that she forgets that, you know, like, seriously, she, she needs her father, you know, um, she can't just bear and grin it like her father can, you know, she can't bear and grin it like Valentine can, which is, it's true, you know, she gets so emotional that she just loses it. And, you know, a lot of times Charlotte can kind of see that, especially with Lulu. Um, and, um, you know, one thing that she, one thing that Maxie said was really interesting. Maxie was like, you know, Lulu acts as though Charlotte doesn't need a father. And the reason why she says that is because Lulu used to, you know, worship her father growing up. And a lot of people didn't like Luke, and a lot of people thought that Luke wasn't good for, um, Lulu. But Lulu would do anything, you know, for, for that, go anywhere, go ice fishing, and she hated ice fishing. If you remember ice fishing, then you know exactly how far I go back. Um, but the point was, you know, she worshipped her father, and she acts as though, you know, she knows that Charlotte does you know, does that too, and she acts, though, like, it's just not a big deal, like, you had a father, you needed a father in your life, and you act as though Charlotte doesn't need a father in her life, so I actually thought that part was pretty interesting, um, okay, um, sorry about that, let's see, um, Oh, and, you know, to be honest, um, Maxie kind of seemed like she was, I don't want to sit there and say she was siding with Valentine, but she was more understanding of where Valentine was coming from. Um, so, okay, Maxie gets to the Metro Court, meets, um, meets Lulu, and Maxie's pretty much like, listen, I'm working with Lulu, I'm working with, um, Valentine, he's a silent partner. And, you know, of course, she's, you know, Lulu starts getting all emotional, talking about, oh, well, how can you work with him like that? And, um, Maxie was like, listen, Cassidy Industries was in the red, and, um, you know, Valentine is really smart, um, 
you know, as as far as being a businessman and stuff like that. He brung Cassidy's Cassidy Industries back up from the ground up um after it was ran into the ground. After it was ran into the ground. And so you know, she feels that he can do the same thing for deception. And you know, the thing was she was like, Listen, without Cass without Valentine, we wouldn't actually have a we wouldn't have a company. And of course Lulu just goes on and on talking about, oh well he's doing it, he has an agenda and this and that and the third. And Maxie was like, Listen, I'm not asking your permission to <laughs> I'm not asking your permission to work with Valentina. I am telling you this as a courtesy. And pretty much, Maxie was like, listen, you know, you don't, you know, this is business. This isn't personal. I understand where you're coming from, but this is business. This is a good opportunity for me, and I need you to support me. She didn't say that, but that's pretty much the gist of the conversation. And, um, you know, after her, after Lulu's, you know, going on and on and on and on about how Valentine does this and Valentine does that, it was one part when Val, when Lulu was like, "Did you know that um, Valentine gave Matt, um, Valentine gave Charlotte his credit card and unlimited access?" And you know, Maxie was just like, "Really?" You know, like she had that like kind of surprised look on her face, like she was happy because you know, as a little girl, whatever, you know, being able to buy whatever you want, like that's insane, and it's you know, it was like she liked that. Um, but at the end of the conversation, pretty much, you know, Lulu was like, "Listen, I'm not gonna sit there. This isn't worth me fighting you over Valentine." And and Maxie was like, "Listen, don't give Valentine that power." Um, to, you know, cause us to argue and stuff like that, you know. Don't give Valentine that satisfaction of, you know, okay, so Charlie gets, you know, to ride a horse and stuff like that to sat in the third and does whatever she wants. Don't give him that power, you know. Don't give him that power to get mad at him and yell at him and stuff like that. Don't give him that power. So at the end of the day, he squashed it and Lou was like, I right, find. You know, you can work with Valentine, that's cool. You know, it's just business and I support you, blah, blah, blah. So, um, quick little, um, that was one of my favorite scenes. My other favorite scene was when Nell went to go see, well, okay, so Valentine was kind of skulking for some reason. Like, he was, like, looking, he was at the Metro Carpet, right? He was, like, at, like, sort of a door and he kept, like, looking for some reason, like he was looking for someone. And Nell walks up to him, and Nell's like, listen, you know, we could be good friends and stuff like that, and you don't want to have me as an enemy. I'm like, yo, um, no, you, you might want to slow your roll there. Um, this guy literally shot somebody out of a window. He threw Ava off a balcony, and he doesn't even like you. <laughs> so, like, what are you doing? And, um... You know, she was pretty much like, listen, I can make trouble for you. And Valentine was like, listen, um, I still have the evidence of what you did, and I have your shares. So, I'm in a win, and you can't really touch me, but I can do far more damage to you. And he was like, listen, as far as this whole, your whole custody thing goes... Um, because Nell was all like, oh, well, I'm trying to protect my son and you're trying to protect your daughter so we can really work together. And Valentine was like, I'm good. And then Valentine was sitting there saying stuff like, listen, um, bes besides, you know, business, I don't really have a problem with Michael. And I can understand where he's coming from as a father, um, to protect the son from you. So I can side with that, you know, um, and he pretty much is like, listen, if it really comes down to it, I'll choose Michael's side over yours. Cause you know, what he what he what he's looking at, not just the fact that Nell is a terrible person and Michael is a better person, but the fact of the matter is he's looking at it like, listen, father to father, if it comes down to it, I'll have his back over yours any day of the week. And he was also just like, Listen, I don't even like you. So do me a favor and don't piss me off. I was just like, damn, Valentine, you, uh, you really put her in her place. And she was all like, well, okay, fine, you're going to have me as an enemy. And Valentine was like, 
I never really saw this as a friendship anyway, so, uh, good luck. And then, um, you know, Nell walked off, then, um, Valentine went back to skulking. But that was probably my favorite part, because Valentine was like, listen, don't piss me off. I have all the evidence on my side of you of helping you out, and plus I have your shares. I don't need you anymore. And as far as Michael goes, besides business, I don't have a problem with him. Um, and I'll, I'll sit there inside with a father protecting his child over you any day of the week. So don't piss me off. And that, that was probably the best part of the episode. Um, so, um, during the party, you know, Violet's being cute or whatever. And everyone's, you know, playing along and shit. And, um, everyone goes to see Violet and what she got going on. And Peter, no, um, Robert's like, Peter, I need to talk to you, um, you know, to help, you know, help out with some stuff. So everyone leaves, Peter and, um, Robert talks, and, you know, Peter's like, yo, this is the first time you called me Peter. So are we, we cool now? Like, what, what's going on? You, you gotta change your heart or something? And, um, you know, Robert, Robert's like, listen, I would love to prove that you're guilty, but there's just no evidence. So for the sake of Anna and, um, you know, this whole thing, I'm just going to pretty much let it go and um, let bygones be bygones. We're not going to be friends, but we can be civil. And Peter's just like, yeah, cool. All right, civil. That works. And Peter in his back of his mind is like, I don't believe you for a second. You hate my guts. And, uh, you're not dropping this. And I get that. You're trying to play me. And you think that you're smarter than me. And as much as I don't like my father, um, he was smart as shit. And I did learn something from him and Valentine. So my point is, I don't trust you, dude. I don't trust you at all. And that's pretty much where, um, Anna walked into the room like, Yo, is everything right? Everything's cool? Like... Yo, Peter's a grown-ass man. Calm down. Like, I get that, you know, you're being his mother and you're being all protective, but Peter's a grown boy. Peter's been taking care of himself for a while. You need to just, like, just calm down. Like, you trying to make up for lost time and you just looking dumb as hell doing it. Like, Peter's a grown-ass man. I think he can handle his own battles. He don't need you to sit there and be trying to, like, constantly interject. I get as a mother and as a parent and stuff like that. But sometimes, like, with Carly, you need to just kind of just step back and let your sons just handle their shit. Like, let your sons be men. Like, they're not kids anymore. Um, um, so, yeah, she walks in. She's like, is everything all right? They're like, yeah, they're cool. And then, you know, they, Robert um, and Finn... Go to Violet to do something off screen or whatever. Um, look at a pony or some shit. And, um, you know, Peter, you know, says to her, you know, to Anna, like, yo, listen, he said that he's gonna just drop and let everything just be bygones, be bygones. Should I trust him? And Anna's like, listen, he's never gonna be your friend, and I don't really need to interject and fight your battles or whatever. But, um, you know, this is as good as it's gonna get, so let's just take the win. And Peter's like, yeah, all right, cool, let's just take the win. And then I think Anna goes somewhere. Um, Peter's like, I gotta make a call. Peter gets on the phone, he's like, listen, um, Robert said that he dropped it, which we, which I know is 100% a lie, and we need to go with a plan to distract him. Um, pretty much neutral, I mean, I don't want to sit there and say neutralize his ass, but like, Get his mind off of Peter. And, you know, this is just my thought. Um, distract probably means find a woman to distract him, literally. Because, you know, as you all know, you need to distract a man with something. It's not money. It's a woman. Hell, actually, to tell you the truth, would probably be a woman over money. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. That's just my guess. Uh... Pause one second. Oh, okay. Uh, quick thing. So, Michael and Sasha are still talking about how, um, 
you know, Willow needs to marry Michael, um, you know, so that way they can have more of a chance because at this point, Michael pretty much says that I have probably a little bit over 50%, like 52, 53% chance that I will get custody of Wiley. But, you know, I need to show that I'm a better person and the, the smart play is to marry Willow. But, you know, um, Willow and um, Chase are in love and I just don't feel like I can do that. You know, that's how Michael was there thinking. And Sasha's like, listen, I want you to do this to protect your son. Don't do this. Don't not do this to hang on to me. You need to do this to protect your son and you need to give Willow the choice in the matter. Um, there was some quick scene where um, Willow was talking to a terminate um, patient and you know it made her all emotional made her think about Wiley and stuff like that um this is in the beginning of the episode she was reading to this kid and um you know the kid was going to be in the hospice and <sighs> one of those this is us moments um and uh you know I made Willow emotional made her think about Wiley and so you know th this whole back and forth between will they or won't they marry and stuff like that it it's just like what are we doing and before I end this whole thing, um, Michael was like, listen, we can't just pretend that we're going to get married for like two weeks and shit like that and then just break up. We need to actually act the part and you need to really be okay with that. Um, you need to live together, actually pretend to be married and shit, you know? Um, and so, yeah. This is this can't be fake, and you know, even though Michael and Sasha has a real thing, so does Will on Chase, and he just feels like he just can't pull that trigger on them. And I understand where he's coming from. Um, so I, at this point, I feel like it's you know before they ended the conversation, um, Michael and Willow's like, listen, um. I don't think we should get married. Pretty much Michael is just gun shy about it. He doesn't want to force Willow into doing something that's going to hurt her relationship with Chase. And um, make her feel like she has to do it and put her on the spot. And Willow's like, listen. And then, you know, Michael's like, listen. Um, I'll find another way. There's, there's another way this could work. And Willow's just like, alright, cool. Um, you know... If you really believe it, then yeah. But if not, then let me know and we'll do this thing. And Sasha and Chase are sitting there talking, brainstorming and stuff like that. And, you know, they talk for a while. And a lot of the stuff is just, you know, back and forth shit. But, um, Chase was like, listen, at the end of the day, you know, I don't think that Willow can live with herself if she felt like she didn't do everything that she could. Like, if... If Nell would have won, if Nell would win this um, custody case, Willow would not be able to take it because she felt like, you know, she would feel like she didn't do everything that she could to um, get married, you know, do everything she could by marrying Michael to give them a better chance. And that's, that's pretty much the gist of the conversation because they go back and forth, but, you know, it's just them talking about their feelings and then them talking about marrying and then, you know... Sasha has this way of kind of like pushing um, Chase and Chase has this way of being resistant towards the idea. So that's pretty much what goes on. I honestly tell you the truth. It's not really much of a worthy scene to be honest. And that will do it for this um, recap. Um, again, apologies it's so late. Um, tomorrow it will be back to normal schedule time unless, you know, whatever. But... My schedule's pretty much open tomorrow. I'm off from work, so, um, as far as I can tell, I'll be back to the normal schedule, um, and then that's it. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for having patience. Um, it's been kind of a crazy week, um, last, you know, whatever. Especially these two days, longer hours at work, so, um, anyway, be safe, um, all that good stuff, you know, wash your goddamn hands, and, um, Sorry that it ran a little bit longer, but I really want to kind of give a lot of more detail into what was going on um, in this episode. So yeah, have a good day or good night depending on when you're watching this, and um, I will catch you in the next review.